Come to the 14th Annual Garden Palooza April 2nd at Four Point Farms. See over 45 plant growers and garden vendors. Free parking and free admission. Stop by and enter to win a garden arbor from Garden Gallery Ironworks. Garden Palooza, Saturday, April 2nd at Four Point Farms in Aurora. So, Judy. Yes? You want to get lucky? William, what are you saying? Have a shamrock. <laughs> and you're in luck, too, for another episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Feckin Brewery in Oregon City, and you know, coming up this week, it's St. Patrick's Day. And I'm here with Mark, who is the brew wizard of Feckin Brewery. Now tell me, what is it that you guys are doing to celebrate St. Patrick's Day? We're putting on the uh, first ever um, Irish Craft Ale Festival. So we're going to have about 14 different breweries from all over the state making Irish Craft Ales. So. And how many brews do you think you make here? We make uh, about six to seven, two rotating seasonals. And what is this delicious one I'm having right now? That's a that's our most popular one right now. It's an imperial espresso milk porter called Top of the Feckin' Morning. And I have to say, it, it, it really is delicious. Also coming up in the show today, we'll be talking about shamrocks and how you can bring a little bit of the Irish into your home this holiday. But coming up first, all the dirt on soil. Well, it is certainly the time of year that we are thinking about our gardens, and I'm here with James. James, tell me who you are and where we're at here. My name is James Cassidy, and I'm an instructor of soil science at Oregon State University. Because really, every garden, no matter if it's edible or flower, life starts in the soil, right? Life, this is the, this is the point, the soil is the point. In a single pinch of soil, there's over a billion living organisms. Good grief. So now, what would be the first thing you would want people to know about their soil, and how would they go about gathering that information? Well, I mean, the first thing is just a the concept that it is a living thing is probably something that's a big jump for many people, but get a soil test. And that soil test is you just send in, get a soil sample, there's a protocol to do that's very easy to find that on the line, and then send it into a laboratory and just have them tell you what, it, what, what, it, what nutrients it has, what but you it don't, is. But you don't want people just to grab it right off the top. There's a way to get it's the soil. exactly right. Um, and you know, go, just go out, just scrape off the top a little bit and go down a little ways in. Uh -huh and get something from a little lower than what you're normally amending to kind of get the inherent properties of your soil and see what it is. Because if you do use compost or leaves on top, you're just going to grab that. That's not going to give you an accurate It's number. not going to be accurate because you want to know the inherent property of the soil. Well, then and I noticed when you did that, there's there's like leaf right. stuff in here. There's roots. a lot of roots in here. Stuff. So we don't completely eliminate all that stuff in, in, the, in the winter or in the spring because that's carbon and energy. That's food for the billions of pin, uh, billions in a single pinch. Well, now wait, when you say you don't eliminate it, I'm, I'm known for when I, at the end of the you know, fall season, uh -huh. I take everything out once it's dead. Yeah, you don't. guys don't do that. No, because what grasses are, what all this stuff is, this is nutrient. This yeah. is carbon and energy. And you want to kill that stuff and put it in the soil bury it in the soil and that feeds the soil and the soil feeds the plants. So you guys actually just, even on your like tomatoes and, and brassica, you just cut them and leave the stumps exactly. in everything. Leave the roots in there because the roots, when they biodegrade, they'll leave channels that eventually will allow for air and water to go in. Well so then what is, it? once you get your testing and, and you get all that information, because what, you, you're a big believer in just compost is great. Yep. I mean, most of the nutrient needs can be handled by compost with the exception of maybe nitrogen. Yeah and then you'll want to amend for that nitrogen just as much as you need though, not too much. And getting the test would certainly tell you what specifically you might want to uh, do. Yep, depending on what laboratory you use, yes. And you have a great web uh, site for knowing yeah. what soil you well, have, don't I you? I mean, if anybody has one of these, <laughs> and who does do these days, <laughs> there's a soil web app. It's called Soil Web, and it's free. And it, you just hit a button and it get your location, and it tells you what your soil type is mapped wow. as. And it may not be that soil anymore because it was taken off when the house was built. Sure. Or yeah, like yeah. That. But then that can give you a start, and then you can do the testing. And really, because soil is alive. Yep. And the more you you can't know too much about your soil, and most people never think about it at all until they something's happening that they don't like. Hey, yeah, that's true. But you're a big believer that if your plants are stunning and healthy and beautiful, your soil is probably balanced, and that's probably. what you're shooting for. Yeah. I mean, the plants. These are soil organisms. Yes. They live in the soil, 
And they're no different than the black bacteria that live in here and the earthworms that live in here. It's all part of each it's other, all part isn't of it? it. And, if the, and if the soil is well, these plants are going to do well. So, you know, for more information on soil and for information on how you can find out about your soil, we have a host of great people that work in this area, both at the school at OSU and different county things. So go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over there and you can find all that information out. Make sure your plants are beautiful because you have healthy soil this year. Thank you so much, Yes, Dennis. soil. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ha <laughs>Visit portlandnursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Since 1926, Bonide has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Prevent insect damage on all your trees and shrubs, even those taller plants. Annual Tree and Shrub Insect Control works from the inside out with one easy application and will leave your plants pest-free for up to one year. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Planting season is here, so let the winter gray explode into beautiful spring color with the help of Farmington Gardens. Walk our gorgeous display gardens and spacious greenhouse. Paved and covered paths and indoor shopping make it the perfect spring gardening experience, rain or shine. You'll find colorful plants, trees and shrubs, primroses, pansies, perennials to add fragrance and beauty to your home inside and out. Open seven days a week and just a short drive out Farmington Road in Aloha. Farmington Gardens, we're growing for you. I'm at Farmington Gardens today with MJ, and MJ, you have some beautiful things for us for spring color. It's spring already, mm -hmm. so let's sure talk is. about what you have. Okay, so I've got some great colorful uh, flowers and a variety of plants, perennials and trees and shrubs that we've got here. A couple of my very favorites is the heuchera, uh, the forever purple. It's just, it holds its color through all four seasons. And right now it really complements a lot of the yellows and pinks that are popping out in, the sh in your variety of shade gardens. This is a pulmonaria, nice variegated leaf, pink flowers. Um, you can also find those with uh, some blue flowers on them right now too, kind of a bluish purple. And even if you cut all the flowers off that, it's still a great plant. So yeah. really, it's multi-season on exactly. that Exactly. Especially for a shade garden because it has a variegated leaf. Yeah, so that's great. Still keeps it a little bit brighter. And then right behind it here is the Virginia, which is certainly an evergreen perennial. Um, this time of year, it's fantastic mm -hmm. because it does all of its blooming right now. Very nice. So you get a lot of those um, hot pinks, bright pinks, and pale pinks Beautiful. this time of year. And uh, spring annuals. The spring annuals, the ranunculus is one of my very favorites. They're just so bright and cheery, really adds a lot of nice bright color to um, to the landscape and just up on your front porch too. Very nice. You know, it's, yeah. a great, it's a great plant for a spring porch. And then I see you have primrose, which really is really spring itself. Yes, and this one right here is um, more of a double and I just, 
again, it kind of goes so along with these out. purples. Mm -hmm. You can see just the white tips on it. I think that's one of my favorites and it just adds quite a bit of color to just a straight purple. And really, so many things are blooming in trees and shrubs, too, and you have some great choices. Yeah, so if you can see all around you as you're walking through, <laughs> you know, towns and a uh, variety of campuses, college campuses, you'll see a lot of these bright spring blooming uh, cherry trees. And then this is so gorgeous, the magnolia. Very a nice. lot of different colors. There's even some in yellow, wow. um, pale pinks, purples, and this is a really nice rich um, called the Vulcan Magnolia. It's real pretty. And roadies are starting. Man, that's roadies gorgeous. Roadies are starting to pop, and those are great. Um, lots of evergreen shrub with lots of full color this time of year. Very in nice. all kinds of colors and sizes. And speaking of color, I, this bench is so eye-catching. I mean, that's the focal point. It's gorgeous. So. The great, this great thing about the bench, you, you see these in reds, yellows, mm -hmm. pinks, and the blues. I think that they're great, you know, in a shade garden. They'll sure. add lots of hot color Definitely. when maybe you don't have a lot that's blooming right now. Very much. And incorporating in maybe some colorful hoses, <laughs> just to fun. add some fun and whimsy fun. to your garden doormats and some garden flags. Nice, really, yeah. because it does complement it. It makes a whole scene, mm -hmm. which you, that's what you want. You want to right. make that whole scene mm -hmm. look so beautiful. Yeah. And you know, I think it's spring, we think of cool colors, but there's hot colors available too. Yeah, and you know, going back into the ranunculus, we've got these great yellows and oranges and the arisimum, which is a wonderful perennial. So a lot of the varieties are gonna start blooming right now in the yellows and oranges. Yeah. Um, a couple of evergreen choices. We've got the Nandinas Beautiful. and the Mahonia, which has those great yellow flowers this time of year. And then we'll soon get their berries a little yeah. bit later in the season. And I think Mahonia, you have to have one because it brings the hummingbirds early to your garden. It does, yeah. They've it been really buzzing does. us around today. Yeah, and even, you know, the hummingbirds love all the flowering trees too. So. Definitely. Yeah. Well, you, you can see it here at Farmington Gardens. You have to come out because we all can use some extra color in our garden this time of year. Come out and see MJ and her staff and really pick up some new things for your garden this spring. Thanks so much. All right, thanks for coming out. For our tip of the week is about cleaning up hellebores. You know, hellebores are evergreen plants, and so this time of year you have beautiful flowers, but you have last year's foliage. So really it's a good time of year to get all of this old foliage out. Now it really is simple too. If you do what Judy does, just pull back the nice blooms. You can really usually see the difference between the small limbs of the old leaves and what the new upright blooming stalks are. And all she's doing is going in and cutting all those off. It also gives you the chance to get out any old leaves, and sometimes you'll find slugs and snails in there too, so it's a good time to put down some kind of trap for them if you want to. So really, it's a very simple process, and it makes your hellebore blooms really pop and look so much more beautiful. And you know, just turning off old leaves on your hellebores, that's our tip of the week. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru your way on the parkway. They had to take the car, they had to get it open with the jaws of life, take me out on a backboard, took me to a Trauma One Center. I absolutely feel like the Subaru saved my life. Well, we, we trust Capital. We trust our salesperson here, Jackie. Jackie's great. I believe that she really cares about us. She teaches me about the Subaru. Our, our way, way on, on the, the parkway. parkway. At French Prairie Perennials, we take pride at being different. From rare, unique, and unusual plant material and handcrafted garden art to our visual scaping program, we can help you create an outdoor living space as unique as you are. Our gift shop has home and garden decor and gifts for all occasions. Visit us at our new location in Aurora, a quick drive from Portland off I-5. French Prairie Perennials, outdoor living elevated. Come to the 14th Annual Garden Palooza April 2nd at Fur Point Farms. See over 45 plant growers and garden vendors. Free parking and free admission. Stop by and enter to win a garden arbor from Garden Gallery Ironworks. Garden Palooza, Saturday, April 2nd at Fur Point Farms in Aurora. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete. 
natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Owl's Garden Center. Brighten up your outdoor spaces with colorful, easy to grow pansies, now on sale for just 89 cents each. We've brought in a huge variety from the farm where we grow all of our plants with care, so you get the brightest, healthiest pansies available. Many colors to choose from, and they're on sale now. Owl's Garden Centers in Woodburn, Sherwood, and Gresham. Well, I'm here with Sarah Denny at Portland Nursery on Stark Street, and today we're going to be talking about the connection of shamrocks with St. Patrick's Day. Now, the one that you're holding, Sarah, you know, a lot of a lot of different things are talked about, you know, the, the folklore of these plants, but this, one of the main ones is that on each stem, you can see three leaves, which represents the Holy Trinity, which is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so that's that's a, one of the many traditional views, and that's why in a lot of those uh, statues you see of St. Patrick's, he'll actually be holding a clover stem. Yes, and actually it became good luck to find a four-leaf clover because the fourth petal uh, represented God's grace. Wow, I would think that I would need all of them to be four <laughs> petals on you my plant. You probably would, William. <laughs> now that purple one, though, looks a lot like it. It's a different, but it's really beautiful. It's very similar. It's got the same kind of growth habit, which is going to be a little bit more of a mounding, spreading um, habit. It's, it's going to be somewhat of a very tender perennial, mm -hmm. so it, you'd be very lucky to get it back, but yeah. it, it could happen. Um, my grandpa actually planted one and was really surprised by how far it, it was able to spread. Well, I, I find that one really beautiful too because of the color of the leaf in a garden setting. And you know, I've had them in my greenhouse in the ground for years and it do, it's not heated. So when it gets 25 out you side, it's 25 in there and they have done it splendidly. So I think I might try that one outside. All right. Well, you can have whichever kind of clover you like. <laughs> That's right. Now here's a couple more that we're looking at. This beauty right here is actually a native to our area. Now a lot of people are very concerned because there's a lot of terminologies that, that get thrown around like shamrocks are a name for them. This is actually oxalis which is a type of clover and people are concerned that they're invasive. Some varieties of them can be very invasive. This though is a native so it's used to our area and it will spread but it makes this beautiful foliage and then look under here underneath it that wonderful dark purple underneath of the leaves. So it really is quite a, a stunning plant. This is one of my favorites of the bunch because it's a little bit smaller. It, it reminds me a little bit more of what you think when you think of a clover. And yeah. the, the purple color makes it different from... It really it makes it pop. Yeah, it does. Well, you know, I, I find, Sarah, that there's a lot of plants in this family and there's been some hybridization done on them. Wonderful colors. Some look great in containers, some in the beds. So if this is a plant that piques your interest and you want to help celebrate St. Patrick's Day, come on down to Portland Nursery on Stark Street and talk to Sarah and any of the great staff here. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thank you. Welcome to Drake's, not your ordinary garden center. Grab a cup of coffee at Antonio's and wander the nursery for the perfect plant. Check out the landscape design showrooms for ideas, then meet with a designer. Come pick out a bouquet of flowers for dinner or for that someone special. Find something distinctive for your home or your garden. Imagine the possibilities and let Drake's turn them into realities. Drake's 70s on Southwest Shoals Ferry Road in Portland. Spring is here, and it's time to get a jump on the season. The Greenhouse Catalog has all the equipment you need to enjoy your garden year-round. First, a seed starting kit to pamper your little seedlings. Then, when the time is right, give them a little nudge outdoors with a cold frame or a heating coil. Soon, you'll be enjoying tasty, fresh vegetables from your greenhouse or your garden. To find everything you need to start growing, go to greenhousecatalog.com. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens.
Your garden is only as good as the ingredients you use. That's where Black Gold can help. Black Gold Seedling Mix is formulated for successful seed germination and strong seedling growth. Black Gold Seedling Mix is organic and OMRI listed, so you can start this year's organic garden outright. Look for Black Gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. So I'm standing in this tiny little orchard and I am here with Lyle. Who are you with, Lyle? I am with uh, Collier Arbor Care, a division of Bartlett Tree Experts. Nice. Now, I gotta ask right away, I'm sure you guys have been doing this a long time. I know you have, and you've got to hear the same questions quite often. So what is one of the main top questions you hear every year about pruning? Why do I prune my fruit tree? And you know, for us, that might not seem like a really valuable question, but it is, because why do we prune fruit trees? One, fruit trees are very vigorous trees that being unpruned would grow out of size and shape very rapidly. Number one reason we have fruit trees is mainly for the fruit production. Sure. So if the fruit is growing up high and you can't reach it, you've kind of negated the purpose of having a fruit tree. So in a home orchard, we like to keep the trees smaller because we're here for the fruit. And so we basically, every year, we continually to control the size of that canopy in order to keep the fruit lower on the canopy. And I'm going to make a jump here of logic, and you tell me if I'm wrong now. I would think that proper pruning probably produces better and more fruit. Correct. Many times you see fruit trees done by homeowners or people that they cut every one of the sprouts off. Sure. And yeah. what that actually does is reduces the fruit production and it kind of removes the production of fruit. Here we have last year's fruit spur, uh, uh, basically a sucker growth uh -huh. that grew last year. Leaving this this year, we will then have fruit spurs okay. the following year. So. By removing all these, you've negated the whole purpose of the fruit tree. And so when we come through and we do thinning on these, we want to really focus on where our next branch is, but we also want to keep the control of the tree so it doesn't outgrow its sure. space and usefulness. Makes perfect sense. So what is the next thing that you guys get asked a lot? Uh, timing. When should we prune that tree? Oh, yeah. So timing is based on the what is the homeowner or the tree's owner objective? Is it there for the bloom? Is it there for the fruit production? So we can kind of look at it two different ways. If we're looking at fruit production, we always want to prune during dormancy. And that can be from November 15th to probably about March 15th is probably the, the very edge of it, depending on the weather that we have. Here we are in late February, and we're also seeing, we're already seeing some of the bud blue, yeah, uh, bud expansion, things there. like that. So, so looking at timing wise, so if we're looking at fruit production, we want to prune during dormancy, but if you're looking at reducing the fruit production and still want to have an aesthetically pleasing tree, we would wait till after the blooms, and then we come through and cut all the blooms off, therefore negating apple production. So really a lot of the way you prune is in a lot of the way that you want to use the, the plant. Correct. Okay. What's the objective? That's really where we should start on all pruning is what are you trying to achieve? You can, trees don't need to be pruned. We're yeah. trying to make them do something for us, okay. whether it's aesthetics, safety, things like that. And so then what's another question that's asked often? Uh, what would be another question that we would say is how or, you know, where do you make that cut? So as you see, Johnny moves through this. This is a very mature um, fruit tree. We have several around here, and you can kind of see some of the bigger cuts that we made on some yeah. of these just to keep the control. So by removing this branch that was sticking all the way out here, we've shortened it back, and now we're forcing more growth all to these branches to become the new canopy. In, turn, in time, we'll be basically coming back to another. We're just and constantly the keeping thing. the size relatively small to the base, to the available so space Lyle, of the I, tree. I get all that, but to me, a lot of that was like in a foreign language. Now, if I'm the average homeowner, I, yes. I want some fruit trees. You're more than happy to help to tell people how to do things, but if they really get 
confused, they can just call you for help. That's right? correct. <laughs> we're very good at it, and we're basically we build on that homeowner's objective. Yeah, on what you listen for. to what they say and what correct. they want. Yep. So you know whether you want to learn how to do printing yourself, or if you'd rather take the better and easier road and have them come out and do it for you, you can go to GardenTime.tv. We'll click you over to their website and give them a call and get all the help you need. Lyle, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's that time of year that we're starting seeds. And well, you know, many people store seeds like this. It's true. You know, you put them in a box or a basket, but you have all your seeds together, but really not the best way for your seeds to stay viable year to year. That's true. And so we wanted to introduce you to this great new product. It's called the Seed Keeper. Now, the wonderful thing about this is within it, you get a little bag of all of these different kind of tools. They even thought about putting in a brush <laughs> to clean up your fingernails. Nice. You can label things. They give you a ruler so you can measure depth. And then even even some tweezers for those really tiny little seeds that are hard to, to deal with. And then within the container, they have a whole uh, thing by month, so you can keep notes, notes on each season. And then you can alphabetize all of your seeds so that you know that beans are actually in with the bees. And what I like is it's a plastic container yeah. and it locks down and there's a lid for it. You put everything together. And then once you get it all complete, you lock it down and it keeps out bugs, moisture, all the elements, and the seeds will stay more fresh for the next time you need them. So if this sounds like something that might interest you on how to, you can organize and keep your seeds, you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll tell you how you can order this great thing online. It'll be shipped directly to your house. We want to thank Feck and Brewery for having us out today and also to 67 Music for introducing us all. And now there is some great new episode coming out on the website, right? Yep, 67music.net. You can find out about the uh, new episode of the Celtic Music Journal, which features Mark Gunn, Tata, Old Man Flanagan's Ghosts, Molly's Revenge, and a lot more. And Steve, there's also a, a great listing of things that are happening at St. Patrick's Day, right? Yeah, that's right. In addition to Feckin' Brewing, we got lots of St. Patrick's Day events and much more at 67music.net. Click events. So for more information about what's going on at Feckin' Brewery for the holiday and also 67 Music, please go to gardentime.tv. As always, we appreciate you spending time with us today and we're going to do it all again next week right here on Garden Time. Slanta. Standards prices are great. We've checked, they're very competitive. That's why we use them. You don't have to waste time running around making phone calls. It's good to know when working with Standard that our staff doesn't have to spend incredible amounts of time searching for pricing. And even with the clients that have checked around, they've always come back to Standard as being their best buy. Since 1947, we set the standard. Standard TV and appliance. Come to the 14th Annual Garden Palooza April 2nd at Fur Point Farms. See over 45 plant growers and garden vendors. Free parking and free admission. Stop by and enter to win a garden arbor from Garden Gallery Ironworks. Garden Palooza, Saturday, April 2nd at Fur Point Farms in Aurora. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.